Okie dokie, folks. Welcome to some 1v1 Fortress. And people have been asking me about the Fortress start. So I'm going to tell you what to do with your starting villagers, all right? Not like a separate video on the Fortress build order, but basically generally what you want to do. Chinese, obviously, start with more. So I'm not going to go to him. I'm going to go to red, and then we'll cast. You start with 10 villagers. I suggest going with three to berries on a mill, three to wood with a lumber camp, and then you use the other six to your farms. And you use the, the six to get your boars. All right? That's basically it. You do not need to make houses on Fortress. It's very hard for people to realize that. People will make the houses because they've made the houses many times before. And people sometimes have no clue what to do, which is why I wanted to show you. Um, it's a bit tricky for me to give the exact numbers on that because Regicide Fortress is typically how the map is played. And Regicide even starts with different amounts of resources. But for whatever reason, the devs... It didn't include Regicide in Fortress uh, in the ranked, so that would be my tip. We've got Charlie the Bird in the blue. Charlie the Bird out there to get the food right away. Good stuff. Sent a lot to wood. Again, you do not need to make houses with your start here. And then we've got Blitz Cartel playing as the Franks in the red. Again, the map is Fortress. You start with stone walls, towers, and a castle. Bunch of houses, barracks. It's a very different map, and this map is a boomy map. Typically, you just see lots of eco. Um, guys, where is Red's second boar? Oh, okay. Red's got a boar here, and Red has a boar here. We'll see if Red wants to take those boars. For now, Red is happily using the farms that the game provided him. And chopping the straggler tree to get some wood. Uh, I think because the houses and the mill added up to being a bit more expensive. Blue, bringing in the next boar now, which I really like. And the expectation is probably a fast castle here, so we have a lot of time to chill. Uh, there's been a decent amount of questions from people today, which is always awesome. So this is perfect for Fortress if you wanted any tips or strats or whatever. But yeah, the Chinese do start with three extra villagers, which makes them top, top tier. And, of course, they start with the farm. So in theory, I think what you'd want to do with the Chinese uh, is you probably want to send five villagers to the farms right away. Or actually what you could do is you could go for an instant mill with like five villagers with Chinese just to get the vill production going. Okay, Red scouting the rest of the map. Still not taking any boars. It's 727 versus 745. So some players are going to have more experience on the boomy maps than others. You don't have to take the boars right away. But it certainly feels like at this stage that Red would have taken them if Red was planning on it. And scouting the rest of the map as well, so it's not like he can't find it. Whereas Blue has already brought in two boars. Blue, uh, let's see. Okay, they've collected about the same amount of resources. I think Blue will overall have more in a second. And, of course, techs are cheaper with the Chinese, and Chinese have a pretty awesome tech tree as well. So I've asked this before. I'll ask this again. I want your input. Do you think that Regicide Fortress would be awesome? I don't think I've ever had anyone say no to that. <laughs> so this is this is just an example of me bringing something else up to kind of half pressure the devs to actually implement it. Uh, I've given the feedback many times before. It's weird to me how Regicide Fortress has been the standard all the way since like 2002. And then we have Fortress in here, but not Regicide. But that'd be freaking awesome, man. I think it'd be fun. The only downside would be if people genuinely did not know what the king did but like that's the same with anything it's like oh i don't know the militia died of archers oh i found out i'm not gonna make militia next time i guess losing the militia doesn't make you lose the game immediately like losing the king might that'd be so cool the rank ladder would be so much more epic especially low elo mid elo if we had regicide mixed in every now and then i would love that well right now i'm concerned okay um i'm concerned for red because Red didn't take any boars. Now, Red's going to take this boar now. So, it's, it's going to look a little better. Uh, oh, wow. Saves the villager inside the castle. Pro strategies. I like it. Red will make it to feudal. We'll have tons of wood for farms. But we'll not have the eco to go fast castle. And then Blue is also going to make it to feudal. And you can tell Blue as well is just kind of like, uh, don't have the exact fast castle build order down here, T90. But we'll figure it out. We'll eventually get a villager over to stone. We've got a villager on gold. And they're just going to slowly build up. 
What's up, Varian? Uh, someone said, is Fast Imp good on this map? I think Fast Imp with Archer Saves is fantastic on this map. I would probably suggest you at least go for two Town Centers in Castle H. But your food eco is generally so good uh, when you make it to Castle Age and assuming you're seeding a lot of farms, then you remember you don't spend food on archers. You could use your unique unit, which is why I think Chinese can thrive even more here. You can make archers as you're booming because you start with the castle and then you could eventually maybe make a forward castle and go fast and forward trebs or something. But okay, Red gets the farm upgrades for free with the Franks. Bringing in this villager now. This is risky, though. She could die. Oh, Saber! Saved. Nice job, Red. Second time that castle's been used for that. Okay, so the boars came in late. The farms reseeding now with horse collar, which is nice. Wood upgrade also was researched. And whoa! Whoa, 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 whoa. Okay, so blue is making gates, like a lot of gates. Place these gates, also place three gates over here. And now red <laughs> red is auto-scouting, and red has wandered into blue's base. <laughs> and I don't think red has any clue that this scout is actually here. The way it's moving tells me it's still auto-scout. And remember, auto-scout always tries to go to the right corner. So I guess red scout could probably escape. Um, yeah, you can't escape this way, and then if blue doesn't fully wall this, red could escape there. But man, this scout has seen some stuff. This scout's gonna get home and be like, guys, you're never gonna believe how many gates the enemy base had. But what is that, like 170 stone? All on gates? Village is just gonna fight off a snow leopard casually underneath the gate. All right. This guy's got no shirt on out here. They're, it's so snowy. There's snow leopard. Still no shirt. Market blacksmith. Uh, and red. I was just going to make a joke about red blocking off the stone. What's the difference? <laughs> What's the difference? I was going to say red clearly showing that stone isn't important for him because he's blocking off the stone. But maybe in red's mind, you can still place a mining camp here. Okay. Okay. Well, I mean, all that aside, Red's timing on the gold and the food is really good here. Market Blacksmith will complete, and then Red could go up to Castle Age. Also, the scout is going to escape! And Charlie the bird is going to go for triple barracks? Red saw one of the foundations. Triple barracks. Dang. Well, if I was a low evil player, and I was up against the Franks... I would probably expect knights. And also, if I was a low evil player, I will ha I would have faced knights, and that's why I expected. So there might be some fear. And I know there's a saying floating around where people call Frank Pickers dirty, you know? Just another dirty Frank Picker, because people are very judgmental. Because everybody and their mother plays Franks, it seems, at low to mid elo. But, uh, yeah, I don't know. Three barracks feels extreme. Maybe blue likes to get three of everything, though. The blue's completely forgotten to go to gold, which is weird because the mining camp was placed. Uh, and blue, FYI, you actually start with a barracks. I'm guessing blue just didn't notice that. But you don't even need to build one. Unless you want four. Maybe that's the strategy, is to have four in total. All right. Stone mining coming in. This villager might make a gate. Oh, yeah, wait for it. Show me a gate. Blue's all about easy access. Easy access and expanding the walls. This is not bad, by the way. This idea is really smart thinking. Protects those golds in the back. And uh, there's a gate. See? <laughs> a gate and a wall. We'll see if Blue wants to maybe delete some of these back walls here to make it a bit easier for booming. But guys, as blue has been placing gates, red has been playing the game. Four and a half minutes of TC idle time for Charlie the bird. And red is now going to do the same thing. And expand some stone walls and is actually making some knights right now. Researches the castle age wood upgrade. Right away, of course, gets the farm upgrade for free with Franks. I think the gates should be up, though. I think blue will be safe from the night rush. And triple barracks is wild. 
You think Blue is going to let the Knights in one of these gates? I don't think he's going to try. But, I mean, it, it's unlikely, right? And, if anything, Blue's prepared because Blue has the barracks. But Charlie the Bird is just so focused on making the base look pretty that Charlie the Bird has completely forgot about Castle Age. And what your approach should be on this map, guys, is you, you can treat it like Arena where you get relics, but you should just boom. Right now, lots of night production from Red. Using these knights to protect this villager. And also quite a bit on stone for red. So maybe red will think about a defensive castle at some stage soon. Maybe blue works at the airport and makes all the announcements regarding the gates. <laughs> or, or like, may, more than anything, maybe he wants to, right? Because I feel like if you worked at the airport and you would do announce gates all the time, you'd get tired of it after a while. Okay. To be fair to blue... The barracks are now producing something, so it's not like they there's no benefit. And Blue's vill count and civilization is still very solid. Blue needs to click up to the next age. Here comes the scout from Red. And BAM! Oh, wait a second. Another gate! Okay, another gate. And the scout's just going to run on by. Scout's, of course, trying to scout the map. This is just auto-scout, so I forgot some areas over here. We have a university now, and man-at-arms for Red. So Red's thinking, how do I counter Spearman? I'm going to go for the longsword line. And I feel like low elo guys, they, they find any reason to go for that. But it's not wrong, right? It's not wrong. I would say that I wouldn't suggest it because it's still very slow. Um, and it just, it might not be needed right this second. Look at this monk, though. This old man with no shoes, guys. He's got sandals. Sandals in the... Wait, are those bare feet? I can't tell. Are those... Is that monk feet? Or are those monk shoes? Uh, man, that kind of looks like bare feet to me. Anyways, I should stop. This is getting weird, isn't it? I didn't realize how weird it actually was. Anyways, I, we're going to let the monk walk in peace. But I imagine that's very cold. And the monk actually sees the spearman and will avoid the spearman. Smart thinking. Auto scout still trying to scout. Monk will go to another relic. Meanwhile, we have the scout from blue. Would have been epic if blue would have spotted that that wall was happening. But wouldn't expect that to happen here, would you? does seem like blue is very fixated on the relic, right? Uh, Red's going to come over here and drop a castle on that relic. Uh, could maybe send an, some axemen. That would actually be my suggestion. If you're ever playing as the Franks and you're worried about your opponent making pikes, mixing in the axemen is probably the way to go as opposed to going for the champion line. And uh, the monk is going to make his way back here. Monk is going to make his way back over here, you have to imagine. 41 villagers versus 39. So I guess the villager count is not that crazy. And then blue. Guys, that was not a kink. It was an investigation, okay? I genuinely never looked at it before. It looks like bare feet to me. So they're walking with bare feet through snow and battles at times. <laughs> Imagine all the arrowheads they step on. And wow, blue also says, I want to castle this middle hill. Well, I guess red isn't castling the hill, but it's interesting how they're making castles in the same spot. I don't know if blues is going to complete, though. Oh, my God. Look at the text. Look at the text from blue. I would love it. It's eco. It's military. It's the mix that you would want. And you're Chinese. And we have another gate because this is just the perfect little passageway. We'll probably have another gate. Can we get a gate check? That can't be right. Oh, interesting. The gates that you start with don't... Oh, that's weird. Capture age doesn't include the gates. Okay, so let's do this. So right now we have 13 gates. 13 gates and counting. Red's castle going to go up. We'll actually shoot down some of the pikes, which is going to be nasty. Blue's pikemen will probably run towards the castle as well. Pikemen are stupid like that. Okay, Blue sees this now, and Blue Micro's away, kind of. 
and red just sold food for gold but red hasn't had a ton on gold red however will get murder holes this is a low elo match if i've ever seen one and red is going to place a new town center right there on the gold all right so what's blue thinking now do you go for a siege push here blue well no we see a second tc out here red has two relics they will both be fighting over this relic and we now have the Great Wall tech. I don't think it's the most expensive technology ever, but uh, it beefs up castles and walls with the Chinese and obviously makes sense here. Now, this monk was told by his masters that, he's, that God told them that he needs to get this relic, okay? And so he walked forward and he was like, I'm going to do it for the Lord. And he was so happy that he was going to be serving out his life's goals for his god and then suddenly he saw the castle fire so he's already standing here without shoes as we've established and his feet are very cold and this is a man questioning his religion look he's essentially turning his back on god by turning his back on the relic <gasps> oh no he's gonna try again it anyways oh, oh the strategies from blue let's go baby Let's go. There was no way I thought he would ever do that, by the way. I thought that you could, you know, distract with the pikes. But I didn't think he would do it. Charlie the bird <laughs> with the plays. Let's go. All right. And now the monk gets to be all loved and whatnot by the Lord. So that's cool. Um, two relics then for blue. Three relics for red. Red obviously was, was quicker to the punch. His faster castle age has given him many, many leads here, but there was six OKD for him. We have a third town center now for Charlie the Bird in the back. Worth it to sacrifice those pikemen. You don't really need the pikemen right now anyways. And what does Red do next? Red says, supplies, because I don't know. what he, As far as he knows, he's only going to be up against pikemen, so maybe he genuinely wants to go for the champion line. Very important click there from Red as Red clicks up to Imp, and now I'm worried for Charlie. Because you can out-micro uh, Castle, but you can't out-micro the Trebuchets. Oh, watch this. So Blue wants a mining camp, and Red wants a mining camp in the same spot. Look at that. Look at it change colors. I feel like we need Christmas music edited in on that. Wait, Red's actually sending his units over here. He wouldn't have seen anything there. And so now the Longswords are going to attack these villagers. That's a nice raid from Red. Red already has the villager lead. Okay, guys, where are you going? Guys, get with it. There you go. Uh, but yeah, Red already has the villager lead. And Red's on the way to the Imperial Age. And Red can make more castles. Because What are you... Guys, what are you doing? Get with it. Fight. I think he's grouping up the villagers and the Longswords. So the knights are going to take care of the mining camp because the mining, he stole the perfect mining camp spot. <laughs> and hey, there we go. There's another mining camp. <laughs> All right. So you take out the mining camp, make your own mining camp. That's fine. I think blue is going to drop a castle here because blue doesn't have army and blue not being in the Imperial Age is going to be so painful. So blue spamming villagers like this is awesome. But it's like five minutes delayed, right? And you don't have any support here, Blue. Oh, God. Red, will you notice this? Okay, Red notices. Okay, th this castle will likely be denied if Blue doesn't back away for a second and bring an army. But Blue doesn't care. Um, if it was for a monk, he would probably try and save the units here, but... He only cares about his holy men. Murder Holes is coming in, so if the castle actually completes, it's likely the Red's army could go down. And here comes some Chukunu, but this is at 90%, and this is not going to complete. Blue fortunately has more villagers in queue because Blue's going to need them. Chukunu should be awesome against the, the uh, long swords. The knights will carry their own a little bit more. Another villager's on the way, getting some hits. So I do think the castle will still actually complete. Chukunu slowly but surely chewing up the infantry. Another villager's on the way. 
No ballistics upgrade, so a lot of the shots from the Chukunu are missing. Okay, another one bites the dust. Now the Eco KD's 19 to 0 on a boom map, guys. On a map where your villagers should be safe. And now there goes Jim. And Jim is going to try and finish this castle. It's now 96%. 97%. But the castle will go down. And here's another villager. <laughs> oh. Yeah, this is this is rough. Now, Red also has trebuchets being massed to push back Blue's castle here. Yikes, man. But... Okay, so it was earlier in this game. Whoa. Wait, is my stream still going? We're still good, right? It was earlier in this game when that relic got snagged in the middle. That's a good highlight in and of itself, but uh, I don't th think this castle's ever gonna go up. Uh, 99%, 99, 99.77. Uh, build it, bro, build it. Uh. 99.95 Okay, he got it. Congratulations. Didn't even need the other guy. Screw him. Well, this castle will be trapped down, so I imagine the next castle is going to go down as well. <laughs> well, sorry, my 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 streaming program refreshed there for a second, so I'm glad we're still good. That castle going up is so good for blue because now blue can focus on the economy a bit more. Uh blue is going to drop the mill here. And so that's that's farming eco that's been needed for a while. Obviously, what's not good is you will likely lose all your castles. But Red almost making a mistake here. Red, yeah, Red will lose this trebuchet to Pikeman. So as that castle now gets deleted by Red, and more Chukunu are on the way, and Blue is going to drop more barracks here to maybe get more Pikes and Chukunus out. I mean, maybe there's a chance Red doesn't have that much army. The red has had a very low amount on gold this game, I've noticed. Seven on gold. That's not much. Yeah, the eco's tied. The relic counts three to two. Now, blue can't contest anything between the castles. But in theory, if he had... If he was producing pikes out of all of his barracks and also producing these Chukunu, I think he could actually take good fights. Cavalier's strong, but without imp armor and without the numbers, it's not going to be quite as strong as red is hoping for. And maybe, just maybe, blue can delay things, make it to the Imperial Age, and then Chinese are very strong against the Franks. So yeah, this is the beauty of low elo, right? Like, obviously, Red's had a great game so far with some great kills, but that castle was a bit of a distraction for Red as well. I would love to see the market be used here if you're blue. Buy the food and go up to the Imperial Age. And if you're worried about that and you feel like that's a waste of gold, then then just sell sell some wood because you have a lot of wood as well. It'll make you a better player to just rely on your eco balance instead of using the market. But everyone's got to use the market every now and then. Wow, so Red is really castle creeping here. Like like Red is playing like a guy who's worried about this army comp. And you should be worried about the army composition if you only have eight cavalier. Hoarding, so the castles even have more HP. Dang. Okay, well, if the game goes on for a long time, Red won't have castles spread out around the map, which could be an issue. But I mean, Red still got stone and gold here. Red's still taking the neutral stone in the middle. Red should be fine here. 78 eco for blue. Blue is on the way to imp. Charlie the bird says there's a chance here. I can do this. Ballistic's now on the way. That castle will be a rude awakening, though. And with that castle being there, the trebs from red should be able to comfortably go after the castle, so I think that was the idea. Also, at this point, I think Cavalier two-handed swordsman can easily kill this army, too. Like, before it was... There, there wasn't enough two-handed swordsmen. I still don't think it's the best unit to be making right now. Uh... Red. <laughs> Man, Red really wants to make sure he takes care of this position. My God. <laughs> He's going crazy. That's a big investment to take out one castle. He's had to make three castles to ensure he takes out one. Yeah, again, with the castle fire and the cavalier, uh, you would expect that Red should be able to take this out. 
That's the best of engagements for Red to take, but the castle is helping a lot against the pikes. Own castle will probably go up. Blue is spamming everything again. The blue doesn't have repair villagers for this castle. Red is extremely tunnel vision, isn't creating many more villagers. And hasn't been creating many more villagers for a bit now. But still, Red will be able to complete this castle. The red should be able to take out Blue's castle, and then all Blue's army should go down. But yeah, big castle creep. And that's that's not a bad strategy overall, but it's just it, it's always a little funny when one player's in Imp, and then the other player's in Castle Age. But then again, you're Franks, right? And you can see how Blue's approaching it. Blue thinks, like, this is the most important area of the map. So. Okay. Need more army. <laughs> Red. <laughs> Do you really need all your castles in the same spot of the map? <laughs> oh. Without the castle creep, it's possible that Trebs would have gone down, by the way. Those castles got lots of kills. 5 and 17, respectively, for these castles. And the Trebs are now going to move. Blue isn't making anything right now. Like, Blue's gold count. Ugh. The things that you could do with that gold. I mean, you could go with your own Cavalier, honestly. I just don't think Blue... That's really crossing Blue's mind. I think Blue's thinking how to counter. Instead of just, like, push through and grind out a victory. Again, still more stone back here. Franks are Franks. So you could have castles all day here if you're red. Lovely job from Red. He does not know what to target next. Probably should just take out the TC and the barracks since his trebs are there. Red will now place more stables, so I'm expecting Paladin. Meanwhile, as upgrades come in for Charlie the Bird, I still have no clue what Charlie the Bird's plan is and what to make here. Only has barracks. And only went barracks this game. Remember, started with the barracks and then added three. As we now have a rocketry coming in. And this castle is going to produce Chukunu. Now, you know what else rocketry affects? Rocketry also affects scorpions with the Chinese. It's just we never see anyone make Chinese scorpions. So I'm very curious what he's planning on making out of these siege workshops. I feel like he just sat there and he read the technology to see what, what it does. And it said Chukunu and scorpions. And he's like, ooh. Okay, let's make Chukunu, and then let's make a siege workshop, and then let's make scorpions. Right? They're actually really strong, but they cannot push castles. And you would need a cow. You, you would probably need to have uh, some halbs in front. So he's making halbs too, or pikes, anyways. Uh. Heated shot. <laughs> Which is not helpful here at all. It's the most confusing tech for low elo players. Or one of the most confusing techs for low elo players. 94 villagers versus 68. Can we check the resources collected? Looking pretty good. But also a lot of the army has been killed. But Blue's not looking to give this up yet. Blue adding more farms. Getting fortified wall and scorpions. Let's go. Needs houses desperately. Desperately needs houses over here. But we'll lose some units, so maybe we'll... Actually, the house is already going up back here. Dang, man. Oh, now heavy scorpions, 1,000 food and 1,100 wood. They might have lowered the cost of that at some stage, but it used to be that. It's close to that. Um, but heavy scorpions combined with halbs is really tough to engage against. It's not bad. Just an awkward to, to get that technology. Also, I feel like the Chukunu, they're just getting value. Rocketry's such a nice tech for them. But yeah, the Cavs should clear it now. There's not a ton of them. I don't know, man. Like, I'm a little concerned about Red's long term because it doesn't feel like Red really knows how to go in for the kill. And Blue really knows how to fight and stay alive. And there's Heavy Scorpion now. Let's go! So if Blue had like four trebs and this army and started to push back the castles, I think Red would die. Blue just doesn't have killing siege yet. He's got like push, uh, holding siege, but he doesn't have killing siege. Now, if you're wondering what you do against a big ball of scorpions, bombard cannons, and onagers. 
and I think either would be really good, but like they flatten the scorpions from distance. I think the onagers are probably a bit better for lower elo because they can do more damage. Uh, bomber cannons are more, and uh, yeah, I guess bomber cannons are also more expensive, which is the other reason why I would say maybe don't go bomber cannons if you can't control them that well. Also, virtually every civ gets onager. Every civ except for two gets onager, and that's not the case with bomber cannons. So if you don't really know if your civ gets bomber cannon or not, maybe I'd suggest onager. There's a lead chukunu now for blue. And Red's trebuchets can't see this. That's a big build up here for Blue. And Blue is also massing Trebs. Dang, man. Charlie the Bird. Will lose this corner, but is being stubborn about it by making Halbs here. That will end up going down, of course. It just doesn't have the numbers. Plus, there's some swordsmen in there. Red's resources are really high. Right now, I think Red feels like a god. Red has cleared up everything that Red has ever seen. Red has three relics. Red's like, ha, 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 I'm destroying your entire base again. What are you going to do about it, pleb? Red's like calling his buddy, like, man, my hotkey scheme's finally working for me. I'm so good at this game now. I bet you if we teamed up, we could beat everybody. And now suddenly Red's like, huh? What is this? Lovely stuff from Blue. Oh, man. I can't wait till Red runs in with something. Guys, Rocketry Scorpions. You never see Rocketry Scorpions, but it's so nice. So strong. Dang, okay, units are down here. Okay, now Red sees it. So now Red's like, oh, okay, I'll use my own traps. Now, Scorpions are very clunky to control. Okay, so here he goes. He's, he's actually using his... Red's using his trebs against the castle from blue. That's a lot of trebuchets. But the halbs are here. The scorpions are here. Red needs army to engage against this. A lot of the halbs are going to go down. I think both players lose castles here because that's just so many trebuchets from red. Dang, what a battle. What a sick battle this is. The KD right now is 3-1 to one KD for red. But let's just keep an eye on that as the game goes on. I'm not sure if Red will know how to handle this composition. For now, though, his castles are chewing up so many units. Oh, Red's going to go for a flank maneuver here. A flank. Okay, so Rocketry Scorpions against the cap. Blue sees this. Blue's probably not pleased to see it, but... Oh, scorpions go... Brrr. Boom! You have 20 plus Rocketry Scorpions, your opponent needs to go for something other than Cap. But if you've got Halbs mixed in as well, it's fantastic. The reinforcements from Blue are there. The confidence from Blue is somehow there. Not sure what it was that Blue saw that said, you know what, I can do this. But so many players resign early at low elo. It's good to see a fighter here. Um, scorpions, of course, rolling into the castle fire. That's painful. Red has made these castles here in the same spot. And it brought some level of success. But remember when I questioned it, I was also thinking like, hmm, maybe you might want castles all around the map. If this game goes on for a long time, what are you going to do? And so, you know, for, for Red, Red just truly needs to spend resources better, right? Like, Red has two stables... And has three barracks. And Blue's got eight siege workshops and has like six barracks. And is has produced out of the castle as well. So now Paladin's on the way, but that's a 90 army death ball. You can't even 20 Paladins. You can't deal with this. Dang, what a comeback. What a comeback. I thought Blue was so dead. Held on. Relied on the economy, and as now was relied on the production, and then the scorpions, too. Dang. Right, I don't know. If you're losing one castle, I don't know about building another one. If it's meant to buy time, I guess it does buy you a little bit more time. You think about the Franks, you're normally thinking eco, cheap castles, and paladins, bam. And, well, we've seen eco, we've seen cheap castles, and we're going to see paladins, bam. Actually, there might be more stables. Oh, uh, Red's got more stables here, I see. Red's actually only producing out of one of them, though. 
Because red is stressed. It's also very possible that red has never faced up against this before. In all the hundred or so games. I, I don't actually know how many games this player has. This is not a composition that I, I uploaded to my channel very frequently. The Chinese scorpions were, were sexy before the Khmer came out, right? This is a thing that people used to mess around with back in the day. And then Khmer get their extra range and double crossbow. But one of those bonuses that you don't talk about a lot with the Chinese because they have so many other things going for them. Also, this castle from Charlie the Bird is just in case raids might come in. So from the gates to the barracks to the scorpions, Charlie the Bird impressing me, but does only have one trebuchet here. See if red can get something more. So this is what I would do if I was red. So first off, I would start producing out of all my stables. That's a big issue for red. Only producing out of this stable for some reason. Probably just ha isn't consistently queuing units as red's trying to control the units. And this is the another classic example of just being scared. If you if you see a big ball, click your units in there and don't look. <laughs> That's what some people do. Um, but yeah, I would go. Paladin is good, right? You, you're definitely gonna need it against AD Army. But I would have added a couple siege workshops and I would have researched Onager. Now it's producing out of these three stables. But definitely used more than three at this stage. Or could have just produced out of these three a little bit earlier, right? Alms are here. Taking out the trebuchets now. Red has also been able to get away with some of this gold. That's something blue will want to deny. I think I'd be pretty annoyed by that if I were Charlie, but... Hey, Blitz. Let me guess. Red's going to drop another castle right here. <laughs> oh... <laughs> Oh, God. <laughs> oh, it's so funny. <laughs> How many castles has that been? <laughs> it's, that's a lot of castles. I think it's like eight in the same spot, man. <laughs> now, blue does have to be careful. If the number of paladin rises to like 30, he could lose all of his scorpions to that. Um... If he doesn't have a Hal buffer. But if he has the Hal buffer, it's still no problem. That's so... So many scorpions. Plus, he has the hill. I just don't get what the castles do for you now if you're red. Right? Like, it, it buys you time, I guess. Maybe that's always been the logic. It doesn't control anything. Okay, here come the paladins. Let's see. Red with the micro. Oh, good. Split micro around the halbs. Going in just for that treb, right? Okay, goes in to get the trebuchet, but at what cost? The paladins run away. I hear a lot of horses neighing as they fall to the ground, bloodied and battered by scorpions. He has hoardings, and he also has architecture. So, oh, oh, oh. Scorpions fire. Dang, man. So those castles have a lot of HP, is my point. 7,000 HP. But blue would need more trebs now. There's a chance that blue runs out of gold. Red still has some gold income here. Red still has some gold income here. Blue now sells off some resources to make some trebuchets. But, you know, if you're blue, you're making... You're relying heavily on a trash unit, which is nice. Red's, red can't say that. Red's made... Everything that red has made in this game costs gold. Another castle?! Another castle. You have no siege to push it back. Now, that's the thing. If he had, like, three trebs, that'd also be different here. But he just loves this spot. <laughs> it's like, you know how when you go to build somewhere, it'll glow red if it doesn't let you? It, it's almost like red's game is bugged, and he doesn't want a castle anywhere else. And he's bought a lot of these castles as well. Okay, Scorpions, Halbs. Champions now. Now, Infantry is even worse. Like, Scorpions are insane against Infantry, even without any special bonuses. Red is going to mass some Trebuchets. Blue's got two as Blue goes in here to hit this. Paladin, like, you can tell in Red's mind, Red doesn't have any faith in the Paladins anymore. Because champions were made. And I, I honestly, I think red's kind of delaying the inevitable. 
I make this joke a lot, but Red's mom probably said, hey, one more game, then you gotta do the dishes. And he's like, really? So he favorites Fortress instead of Arabia, so the game will go on longer, and now he just keeps buying castles. Because the more castles he buys, the longer he can delay from doing the chores. He's soon gonna be out of gold, he loses his trebuchet there. Castle fire did help out a lot. Honestly, his castles had just as many kills as units have in this game. But, you know, more paladins on the way. The paladins aren't going to cut it. The castle just will not be able to be repaired. And Blitz Cartel is going to be forced to tap out. What an incredible comeback here from Charlie the Bird. Uh, genuinely impressed. I also want to know if Charlie the Bird knew about Chinese Scorpions before this. Or if Charlie the Bird sat there and read the rocketry technology. Because it's like he made Chukunu, he clicked rocketry, and then the Siege Workshops came out. I think he read it and he was like, oh, wait. Chukunu might not work because I don't have the castles. Yeah, I think that was it too, right? He didn't have a lot of castles. Now we see a Siege Workshop. Now, if this isn't the most low little player thing, I don't know what is. So now Red's like, oh... Maybe I maybe what I'm doing isn't working at all. Maybe I should try siege. But imagine if you had your castles, your eight castles still, you know, like now onager's on the way. This is what I was talking about earlier. If you had a combination of onager and paladins and you still had the protection of castles, I'm sure that would have been fantastic. But it's easy to say after the fact. Oh, that didn't work. So now he's going to try for onager shots. Now we could see some satisfying shots on scorpions. <laughs> Does this say total castles, by the way? Castles. 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 Castles max is what it has, and it says six, but it doesn't say total castles. All right, here comes the mangonel. It's not an onager yet, so it's probably not the best time to engage. Now it's onager. Okay, and it goes down. Ting, 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 ting. Charlie the bird continues. Red is desperate. Red does not want to tap out yet. And Red says, hey, I want to make some of those things. They're good. <laughs> oh, it says total castles right next to it? Oh, okay, I knew, I knew that. Hit the scorps! Ugh! Okay, you got one more scorpion. Desperation walls now, it looks like, from Red. The trebs are going to go after the gate, though. I guess you do have one relic more than the opposition. So holding on, in theory, could be better for you. But, oh god, he's buying stone again. Oh no. Not again. Oh no, stop it. You stop this. It's so expensive to buy it. Don't you sell that food, man. You already sold all your wood. I guess you can't go for your own trash units now. He's still trying to buy stone. <laughs> for another castle here. Okay, gate's gonna go down so the halbs can close in there. Making scorpions. Of course, doesn't have the unique bonuses for his scorpions. Franks do actually get heavy scorpion though, so it's not, not a bad thing for the Franks to make. And now he's gonna he's housed actually he's housed he was used to having all the castles some more houses now for red you definitely can tell like red knows this is over red just kind of sh staring at his screen clicking whatever he can but i even think the amount of speed and like the amount of panic has gone down for red red just like whoa i lost another one. Oh man i thought i could have done it today i guess not and he just casually you know garrison some stuff He's going to wait for his champions to appear and then send those in to die as well. Oh, satisfying shots on villagers with scorpions. Let's go. Oh, I was really hoping he would shoot these. Villagers are accomplishing more against these trebuchets than the paladins did, so there's that. Now 50 population for Blitz Cartel, who still feels like, I've got this. I could do this, and calls the GG. Thank you for calling the GG, boys. This is cool to see. And, and the GG's exchanged. Wow. So, I think we saw the one-sidedness of Frank players at times, right? Um, Blitz Cartel is a big fan of the early castle numbers, as we did see that castle in the middle. 
big fan of the cab, big fan of the infantry. Didn't really want to mix in any trash units either, right? It was just spend my gold on paladins, spend my stone on castles, and that's how I'm going to play the game, and that's that. I really do think this is a classic case of a player being overconfident. Like, he looked overconfident to me anyways. He was destroying all the barracks from blue. He destroyed the town center and more barracks over here. He was mopping up all blue's army. But in that time where red was enjoying life and killing everything, blue was booming like a madman. And blue boomed up to have a much better economy. And then also blue went into a very good combination. Your best combinations in late game Age of Empires is always going to be a gold unit and a trash unit. So a unit that doesn't cost gold. And that's exactly what we had, right? We had Halb and we had Scorpion. If you're just going gold units, you better be killing quickly. And I do think that it actually would have been possible for Red to do that. But Red had to continue to spend that gold. It's not like Red didn't have food and Red didn't have gold this game. But Red was very relaxed. Just relaxed the whole game. And then here, like, you could see Blue just, just shot up with military population. Great comeback from Charlie the Bird. Also, we had that awesome moment with the Monk. Brought in 2,800 gold from Relics, but it would have been more like 1,400 gold or something if it wasn't for that special Monk trick earlier on in the game. I like to see comebacks like that. A lot of players would resign after losing their base. Blue was stubborn, but Blue was stubborn in the right ways. Yeah, there's a look at the APM. Not sure what happened here, actually. 110 minutes. That was the fastest moment, apparently. 110 minutes. What was that? Clicking scorpions, maybe? <laughs> I, I don't know what that was exactly. APM is always really deceiving. Like blue, for example. This is probably when blue was placing his gates and clicking his villagers to gates earlier on in the game. But uh, anyways, I think a lot of things to learn from in this game. A fun one to watch. Nice storylines involved and rocketry scorpions, man. Let's actually see. How many kills does this group of scorpions have? 33 kills. And I, he lost a lot of scorpions to castle fire as well. But, but think about it. Even if you're not killing the unit with the scorpions, you are weakening a full group of units so you can use your halbs in the mix and finish off the rest of it. That's what makes the scorpion strong. It's not that it's a killer unit. It's that it weakens the entire group that's closing in against you. And you, so you've got 16 plus 5 attack. Uh, and it's pass-through damage. So you know, there's just not many units that can really engage against this. I think the best composition for Franks would be Paladin Bombard Cannon. But even then, like, Paladins still could get approached by the Halberdiers. So you'd almost need to then have like Axemen or something. The weakness of Scorpions is how long it gets to them, how clunky they are, and how slow they are. Paladins or any type of mobility could lead to raids and outrun them, but give someone the time, and then you're very defensive. This is what can happen to you. 